Hey, two picklers want to continue the pair of pickleball series. I uh, thought it'd be helpful to do a video on how to play the game so that you can get out there and start playing as soon as possible. We'll continue working on some of the videos about the mechanics of how to hit particular shots and things like that. Uh, but in this video, we're just going to go over the entire point uh, so you can get out there and start playing. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and look at the anatomy of a point here. What we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at a point from the 2019 U.S. Open Para Pickleball Exhibition Match that was played down in Naples. Uh, you'll see the names of the players here. It's uh, Philippe Bedard and Jean-Francois Silvestre on our side. And on the other side, you'll see Michael O'Leary and Joe Sullivan. All four of them are excellent pickleball players. And we use some of the rallies in this match in order to uh, show you how to play the game. If you're not familiar with the terminology of a pickleball court in terms of what the baseline is or what the kitchen is and things like that, uh, I'll link to a video above and below so you can look at that video and get a sense of what things on a pickleball court are called. In this video, I want to focus on specifically how it is to play a pair of pickleball point and not get into the details of how to score and things like that. If you need that information, again, we'll link to it above and below. Let's go ahead and break the point down to its different pieces so that you understand how the point is built or what the anatomy of the point is. In this point, Philippe and Jean-Francois are the serving team. You'll notice that both of them are positioned behind the baseline on the court. Um, that's because there's a two-bounce rule, which I'll explain in a minute in pickleball. That makes them stay in that position. Michael and Joe, who are on the return team, are in a different position than Philippe and Jean-Francois. Joe, as the returner who's going to hit the ball, is back at the baseline. Michael, even though he's on the return team, isn't actually going to return the ball. That's going to be Joe who returns the ball. So Michael is actually positioned on the court up uh, or near the no volley zone or kitchen zone line at the time of the serve. Philippe is going to execute his serve, and then the teams are going to move into their positions as a serve and return team. What you see here is the two bounce rules. So Philippe and Jean-Francois have to let the return bounce before they can hit it. So they can't hit it in the air like in a volley. The reason they were behind the baseline at the time the serve was hit was because of this rule. So since the ball has to bounce, they stay behind the baseline so that they can't be forced backwards with the return. It allows them to come forward after the return is served to hit the next shot, which in pickleball is called the third shot. On the other hand, the returner, Joe in this case, doesn't have to wait until the ball bounces before moving. So as soon as Joe hits that ball, he's moving forward to join Michael up at the Novali zone or kitchen line. In pickleball, you want to make sure that you get up to the no volley zone or kitchen line as soon as possible because it's a game that is dictated by controlling that part of the court. Philippe and Jean-Francois move forward here and then execute what's generally referred to as a third shot in pickleball. It's a really important shot in pickleball and is unique to the game. Uh, so they're going to hit the third shot here as the serving team moving forward. Start making their way up to the no volley zone or kitchen line here. In pickleball, it's really important to learn how to dink or how to play a soft game. Jean-Francois here is hitting what's referred to as a dink. It's basically a soft or drop shot that is intended to land inside the kitchen on the other side of the court. After the two bounces, so the serve bounce and the return bounce, you can hit the ball either by letting it bounce or hitting it in the air, which is termed a volley, uh, as long as you're not inside the kitchen or no volley zone. Uh, and we'll explain that rule in a minute. You'll see here an exchange of a few volleys between Jean-Francois, Philippe, and Joe. Ultimately, the ball lands in the net, ending the point. Let's look at another point from the vantage point of the return team. Jean-Francois on the far court is serving, and Joe on this side is returning the ball. You'll see that as soon as Joe hits that ball, he, he basically moves forward towards the no volley zone, and the servers, same as in the last point, stay back uh, because they have to wait uh, till the two-bounce rule is uh, met, and they can execute their third shot. Uh, you'll see them come forward here with a dink, and then there's a slam that uh, John Francois misses, but it's still a good shot by him or a good attempt by him. So let's talk about the no volley zone rule because it's a very important rule in pickleball. Sometimes you hear it called the kitchen rule too. It's the same thing. The no volley zone rule is that the player cannot be in what's called the no volley zone or the kitchen before, during, or after executing a volley or a, a hit in the air. So you have to stay outside of the no volley zone or the kitchen while executing a volley. You also cannot enter the no volley zone immediately before, immediately after executing the volley. Even if the ball is dead, your momentum carries you in the no volley zone or the kitchen and that is considered a fault. In the diagram, you'll see the blue zone there is the no volley zone. So if the player here indicated by the blue male player steps into the no volley zone before, during, or after a volley, that would be considered a fault. 
Going back to the match, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. You see John francois is, is moving forward here on the volley. What you see here is that his rear wheels do not enter the no volley zone, so he has not committed a fault. It's important to note that the front caster wheels can be in the no volley zone or in the kitchen without committing a violation of the no volley zone rule. Um, that rule may or may not change in the future. It's something that you should follow up with if you plan on playing para pickleball at a competitive or tournament level. But at this point, when this video was published, the front caster wheels can, in fact, enter the no volley zone without committing a no volley zone fault. One rule that applies specifically in para pickleball is a two bounce rule in addition to the serve and return. Standing players are allowed one bounce before they have to hit the ball. Para pickleball players are allowed two bounces uh, before they have to hit the ball. In these points, you'll see how the ball bounces twice uh, before the ball gets hit, and that is the two bounce rule for para pickleball. One last note is that para pickleball does not have to be played with only para pickleball players. Para pickleball can be played in any combination. Here you're going to see something called a hybrid, which is one up, one down. If you're a para athlete interested in playing pickleball, don't feel like you have to play only with other para athletes. It's a sport that you can play with uh, standing athletes. You go to your local rec center or facility and just join in the action and enjoy the sport.